Hello everyone, thank you for joining the second session of the battery training. Today we will have uh, three uh, panelists uh, and um, after we will have the uh, each uh, after each panelist uh, presents, then we will have the 30 minutes for the Q&A session. You can post your uh, question in the question uh, box and please also refer it to the name of the panelist and later on during that Q&A session we will get back to question and answer them. Now I would like to give the floor to Vittoria Ravello from the Automotive Research and Advanced Engineer Central uh, Research of Fiat CRF. Um, Hello, good afternoon also on my side. I need just maybe an invitation to share my screen. Yeah. Okay, now it arrived. Now you. Now you should see my screen in a full form, right? Yes, yes, that's okay. correct. Good, so let's start. Uh, I am in charge of the first of the three speech. This one will be focused on two topics that are mentioned in this slide. The first is the selection and technical feature uh, of an onboard battery chargers. And the second is uh, communication between the BMS, the battery management system, and the VCU, the vehicle control unit. But let's start with one simple basic slide in which I summed up two simple but important concepts. The first is that energy is the product of power by time. Energy is what we need inside the battery to reach a certain given EV range. And due to that, uh, what we are aiming in general is to try to increase more and more this energy. Um, for instance, thanks to the improvement on the battery cell and having lighter battery able to give the same energy or with the same weight able to give us more energy. And the increase of energy coupled with the second point that is the request that we are in general charging time shorter and shorter to try to go in the direction of the experience we have with the traditional and gasoline and diesel cars uh, create a double issue because if we increase at the same time energy and power and uh, sorry and the time obviously a side effect uh, more energy less time means uh, more and more power and so the power requested for the charging in the last years is becoming bigger and bigger for instance looking at the infrastructure for the fast charging of passenger cars and trucks you can verify this, this sentence in practice. We move from some tens of kilowatt, now we are having available infrastructure by 350 kilowatt and someone is also investigating uh, the hypothesis to reach one megawatt and more. Power, electrically speaking, is proportional to the product voltage by current. And due to that, uh, if power grows up, uh, the only way to contain the increase of current that is con constrained by technical limits in the cable flexibility and dimension, in the connector's dimension, in the sense of, of current, uh, for instance, measure, and means increase voltage more and more. And so what we see, again, in passenger cars and uh, light heavy duty vehicle is to see today voltage of 800 and more in the research field. So very, very far from the reality of the two, three, four wheeler, where in general the voltage is high. Uh, lower than 100 and the power accordingly and the energy too. Um, charger means uh, uh, charge a battery and to charge a battery we have to have clear what means charge a battery and when we say charge a battery we refer to the so-called secondary electrochemical battery cell that are the rechargeable one. Um, we at the end are reversing a chemical reaction is a reduction oxidation reaction and thanks to an external voltage source applied to the terminal of the battery of the cell in this picture we can reverse this reaction which in the role of anode and cathode in the classical discharging condition and restoring the energy inside the battery 
this slide is important because remember us that unluckily uh, charging is not refueling it's not simply transferring someone from one place to another like a liquid from one tank to another but it is making this chemical reaction take place and obviously it means uh, efficiency that is not 100 means uh, time that is not instantaneous and means uh, possible aging and thermal losses issue to be taken into account the typical profile to charge batteries this picture is uh, correct in general for a lithium-ion cell but is technically speaking very very close to the one we would experience still charging an old lead battery uh, is what you see in the picture uh, the charge the so-called standard traditional classical long term charge is based on two phases the first phase here in this first part of the graph is at constant current and due to that this phase is called cc constant current and a second phase that is uh, on the contrary with the current decreasing as you can see by the picture of the current versus time while the voltage is kept uh, at its limit as a consequence of this choice uh, the constant current constant voltage charge is not so short as we would like uh, and in particular the second part of the charging the so-called cv is in respect of the uh, st state of charge delta we can obtain uh, longer than the previous and that can be seen by the upper picture where the state of charge of the battery is shown in the time we see a certain gradient during the first phase when the current is big and the voltage is going up too and the power is the product of these two lines while in the second half and the second part this becomes less and less effective the second half is not so much effective in terms of energy restored in the cell but it's very important to guarantee a proper lifetime of the battery because there are also other chemical secondary reactions that can take place in this phase second option for the today cars uh, the vehicles is to approach the so-called partial dc fast charging what does it mean it means that is a charge in which we can experience current largely higher than the one we have in the standard charging uh, it's a partial charge in the sense that to avoid damages of the cell to, with the today technology at least we can reach state of charge 80 85 not 100 clear and in general it's to be performed with a proper cell temperature if you consider classical lithium battery of today in general it means something like at least 20 25 degrees and less than 50 for instance so there is a window where you can perform this test this type of charge if you do out of these limits so higher state of charge for instance very low temperature the risk to create the so-called lithium platination uh, lithium plating is uh, relevant lithium plating is a phenomenon that at the end uh, create a reduction of the capacity of the cell so create a accelerated aging of the cell and if not correctly counteracted can at the end destroy the uh, anyway make the need to replace the battery with a new one the first phase the so-called current constant current phase is performed with very high current the way to measure this intensity is obtained through a parameter called C rate that is the ratio between the current and the nominal capacity of the battery classical battery standard charging is C rate 1c in the C fast charging particularly with some chemical technologies that allow it you can reach two three four in some cases five C so five times the current and the power to do that we need a high efficient battery in practice the right one to do it is the lithium ion you can do obviously also with lead if you like but the, the aging effect are largely bigger in general ask for a forced cooling at the end the cooling of the battery system becomes more strong in this condition than in the classical um, operation on the car and the last element is an high power on charges at least some time of year the number of years also depends on the size of the battery obviously. in general this charge is performed through a charger that is off board is in, let me say some way inside the station the charging station that at this point is from the power perspective directly connected to the battery pack uh, and 
last but not least, uh, it's an important, useful weapon to be used when needed. The idea to replace one-to-one -one all the charging experience with the DC fast charging to be closer to the experience with a traditional car is in general not winning for cost issue, but also for aging impact. So the good suggestion is to take care of this uh, charging, but if needed, not as, let me say, a standard one. Why charging is a relevant uh, experience for the user of the vehicle? Because the effectiveness of the charging has a wide impact on the uh, what is around it. And this list of bullet points tell us the charging efficiency is very important, and charging efficiency is the sum of the losses I have in the infrastructures, in the wall books, in the DC station, in the cables connecting the two parts, in the charger, if it is on board of board, and in the battery itself, for the main reason I mentioned you before. And it also depends on the mode of charging, the standardized mode to perform the charging, and some way fixed the consumption, the energy consumption value, and not only that, but also how much we have to pay. That's an important passage to be, uh, let me say, focused. With traditional car, we pay the fuel we transfer from the station to the car. With electric vehicle, we pay, uh, on the contrary, for the energy we are taking from the wall, from the grid. That if we lose something due to efficiency, we pay also the losses. It's like to have a refueling with a hole in your pipeline and you pay more than what you put in the tank of the car. The charging time, because charging time means availability of the vehicle. If the vehicle is under charge, you cannot use it, except dynamic continuous charging in motion, but it is for tramway, for other type of vehicle, maybe in future also for trucks, in longer term for cars, but at the moment not. The way in which you connect the vehicle to the grid can impact a lot on the experience of the user and also the safety. And last but not least, uh, the way in which I charge the profile of current in the time, the intensity of the car and the temperature impact, as we said, on the aging. Looking at the physical way to do the charging, we have two macro approaches. One is based on conductive approach, cables and socket and plugs. The second is based on wireless technology. So there is no a physical contact between the primary that is in the ground in general, as you see in the picture, and the secondary that is under the vehicle. This does not mean that there, you need a communication and a proper, let me say, coupling between the two parts, but there is no contact and no need to touch the parts under charging. Uh, technically speaking, if I see this, this physical principle applied on the charger, you at the end can create three scenario. One scenario with charger always in complete unborn, that is called AC charging, and we'll see in the next slide why it's called in this way. A solution in which the charger itself is split, part on board, part off board, like this picture tells us, the charger is the sum of the two parts at the end. And last is the DC charging with, as we said before, the DC charging, the charger out of the vehicle. And about the AC and DC, this is an important picture because tell us a very relevant element. We call the charging AC when in the cable connecting the grid and the vehicle, there is an AC waveform. And we call DC when there is a DC waveform. This does not mean that battery is charged in, with something different from a DC. Battery is always, this high voltage battery system, is always charged in DC. Simply in this case, the device transforming AC in the proper DC is on board. In this case, is integrated in this wall box. In the second case, this one typically in cars, the charger is not active, as you can see, but is used for the communication between the system because it's the bridge speaking to the battery and speaking to the charger. <clears throat> conductive mode can be performed in different, uh, conductive charging, so in different modes, here you see a list of uh, the most effective and most safe for cars is mode three, asking for huge components and heavy weight. Mode two is for cars uh, a um, charge to be done in possibly not daily, but occasionally in smaller vehicle different, because in smaller vehicle you can charge in a reasonable time with this power level, the battery that has less energy, in this case is less and less. And the mode for that is the DC charging we described you before. 
to close this part on charger, I put one charger coming from Bruce, a very high technology components and device to uh, see together, this is an high voltage charger, but can be the same also for low voltage one, some element to be fixed. What is important is safety. Here you see some safety element. Charger in principle should guarantee a full electrical separation between the vehicle and the main through transform and insulation like that, called galvanical insulation, has to be possibly certified. Here is a German certification, depending on the one you like, and guarantee a high IP protection rating to water and liquid and parts that can go inside, risking to create some short circuit or something like that. In general, the automotive one are can controlled. Ask for a limited battery ripple current in order to not damage the battery. Can be single or three phase, depending you connect to the grid where, uh, with sometimes special cooling, like in these cases, with as less as possible reactive power. What we are fixing is the total upper and power of the grid, not only the the, the active one, that is the one we discussed, the kilowatt, but also the kilowatt and making the volt ampere as a whole. And last but not least, if the devices can be operated in combined way, it can also guarantee more than what the single can do. If you have a data sheet of a component like this one, you find in the data sheet some data. There is a part in general describing the AC input, showing for single entry phase, which is the voltage window the device can apply. There is also in the same block information of the maximum current on the AC side of three and single phase, and which is the frequency window again you can apply. As you can see, this window enabled the operation both for European and American, for instance, grid, 50 and 60 Hz, make possible to operate the system with a certain flexibility also in terms of AC among the different three phase voltages we have available in the world, 380, 400, 430, and so on. Then there is a typically the second block showing the DC, so what you have on the motor side of the battery side, sorry. sorry. Again, these are DC voltages, as you can see, for three phase and single phase. And again, same information for current, maximum power, and peak efficiencies. This is the electrical picture of the device. Then, in general, there are technical information on the mechanical, material, weight, volume, level of protection, as I said before, how much liquid, if it is liquid cooled in this case, and the pressure of the circuit and the pump that move this liquid inside the heat sink, and safety, that are elements we already discussed before. Moreover, there are in general physical dimension, important for the installation, a window that show single entry phase where to operate and in which way, and efficiencies, depending on the three phase at different voltage, you can have in the different places the efficiency. This is the power versus the efficiency, it can be different. And the high efficiency number are true only in certain area of power, not so much in the lower. It seems not so much different, but 6% means 6% of money we pay not having back a range of the vehicle. So, closing the picture of that, uh, which are the most important elements are obviously low cost, that's important, compact weight volume, but are important the insulation, safety issue, efficiency, partial load condition. Why there is the efficiency, why the efficiency, why the area better it is, the ripple, the lower stress on the battery, and the so-called power factor control system that help to guarantee a proper AC input waveform. Going towards the world of vehicle to grid and vehicle to home, so bidirectionality, battery used also to transfer energy to the grid, charger are becoming bidirectional. Now, from some weeks, we have the ISO 15118.20 available, and due to that, we can take advantage of this capability. And particularly in this direction, the quality waveform on the AC side, the harmonic distortion, will probably become more and more strict today. The level of requested is not so strong because the logic is few kilowatt and one way approach with the bidirectionality and bigger power. I feel that probably the quality of the ripple effect on the grid will become more and more strong. Okay, said this, we can spend our last 10 minutes speaking about the second topic, BMS. BMS is a part of a complex system going under the name of battery system where there are the cells, connection, the housing, protection, 
electrical protection, relays, fuses, thermal interface, a lot of elements, as you can see, power connection, but also communication board, where the BMS communicate with the vehicle management unit. Uh, why we need this battery system management uh, functionality? Because manage the cell modules help safety, help to limit thermal problems like runaway, reliability, help to in, reduce the decrease, the, the speed of the decrease of the performance of the battery in the time, both in cycling and in time of sustainable calendar life, so the physical passage of time, and performance. And through this action, make the system inside the other expensive cell higher value. So it's important to be effective in that to guarantee all these elements. In general, battery packs are made of the connection of series and sometimes parallel cells. More is, big is the pack, higher is the number of cells in typically we connect. In electric vehicle of cars, we have 100, 200 cells, and in someone like the Tesla that uses smaller cells, thousands of cells connected. If we simply believe to control the system, measuring voltage, current, and temperature as a single value of the system, can be not so much effective because unluckily the cells have not the same physical behavior of each other. There is a production scattering, higher uh, particularly for the cheapest cell. If we are not taking care of that, the effect is so-called unbalancing of the cell, the results are the beginning of performance reduction and in the second phase, if nothing is done to counteract also uh, damages with possible also risk of side effect, dangerous for the people in the car, for instance, in the vehicle. Uh, which are the role of the battery management system? The main one is, and the most classical, is the monitoring. So measure anything to avoid that there are not cells whose voltage, whose current, whose temperature are out of the specified proper user usage window. Second, particularly the more modern and more cost one, is the management among which there is the, the phase of the balancing. So how to counteract the scattering through balancing method that can be passive, active, semi-active, there are a lot of ways. To do that, we use microprocessor, integrated circuit, where the algorithms of management are put in, multiple electric as first voltage and thermal sensor to measure locally the cell behavior. The higher is the number, the better it is. Obviously, cost and complexity goes in the other way, so it's a compromise at the end. In future, maybe we'll be able to reach this solution. So cell aiming inside directly the sensing capability at the moment, not yet. And the way in which the sensor are connected to the board and the board to the, to the system as a whole can be today largely done by cabling, cabling. In future, someone is coming on the market just now, wireless, can be done electromagnetically or optical. This is the most promising and most desired one, and in the long run, also for capacitive approaches. Here you see an example of a PCB, so a printed circuit board where there is a, a BMS. You see here the microprocessor, some other integrated circuit for the monitoring and for redundancy, asked by functional safety. The connection to the sensor, the voltage and temperature sensor on two sides, and here is an active balancing system. In this case, it's an active balancing board. And this is an example of what is called BMS. It's a small unit in terms of weight volume, but very relevant as it is at the end an engine control unit. Here you see this applied to a module. The module is done by 12 big cells, uh, reached by three cells in parallel each. The system measure temperature voltage of each of the triplet and control and manage all of them, also balancing the one. is a proto unit done by Fraunhofer Institute, one of the Fraunhofer Institute, very valuable. Um, how to put, where to put the, the sensing and the, and the brain? There are different approaches. One is to have all here, connecting this board physically to the single cell with the sensing on the cell. This solution is in general applied in low voltage system when there are limited number of cells because obviously is cheaper. Obviously ask for, at least in the cable solution, a lot of cables, and so less are the cell, better it is. Going to big pack, the one of cars, trucks, buses, on the contrary is common today, 
to distribute the role, leaving in the main board the master, the function of uh, controlling and sending the command, and putting the balancing and the sensing locally through or devoted the uh, system applied on each cell or to units that are in general module oriented. So a, something in the middle, not in, if you have 100 cell, 100 board, but something like 10 boards, for instance, if you have 10, 10 cells. And this is the solution most commonly applied today in the bigger pack, the one of tens of kilowatt hour. What are the role of the BMS? BMS is a lot of fun thing to do. Acquire data and communicate. Identify by algorithm the state of charge and its aging effect, the state of health, so-called. And then do the electrical management, protecting the system, avoiding too much discharge, controlling the charging, protecting the deep discharge and the over discharge condition, and the balancing. The topic mentioned before, thermally acting the system, the cooling, uh, heating or, or cooling system you need depending on the environmental condition to keep as much as possible the cell at the same temperature of each other, few degrees each other, and managing the cooling and the heating, asking to the device to operate for that. And then there is the safety, the over temperature and the disconnection in case of dangerous event. Some makers put inside the same unit also function like the loss of insulation system for the high voltage devices, the one with more than 60 volts at the terminals. Here you see an example, this is an example, physical example showing how complex is the limitation. You see upper part, the power you can put in the battery, the maximum charging power, lower part of the graph, the one you can take from the battery. And here you see how much the power changes, changing the temperature for minus uh, 30, 40, depending on the technology, up to 50, 60 degrees. And how the power is also different depending on the state of charge. The more the battery is charged, the less power you can put in. The more the battery is discharged, the less power you can take from. Is, let me say, uh, different the behavior depending on charge discharge. In general, as you can see, the best performance at the end stays in a window that are at the end really limited in respect of the full ambient temperature of the application like a vehicle. Communication was the topic of the second point. The last slide are telling us this. The communication between the vehicle and the BMS is done by CAN. This is the typical CAN element, CAN high and low, plus ground into a volt. And in this CAN line, we connect all the different devices, not only the BMS of the battery, but the inverter traction system, the charger, and so on. All of them run in this high speed can, yeah, if you like, you will find in the, the file all the data you need, the technical data, and the VMU then communicate with other parts of the vehicle with can that can have a similar speed for specific needs or light, lower speed in case it's simply management high level functionality. Last slide for me is the last, yes, so we are in time, is an example implemented again down front offer showing how complex is the game. Here are the modules, some cell connected together with the cooling. Here are the slave, the slave board measuring temperature voltages and doing the, the equalization, the balancing. They communicate by CAN to the BMS master, that is this board. It has also interaction with the switches and in case it is a voltage system with the protection monitoring system. In the same Lower level can there is also the current sensor. In this example, series connected is just one measure because all the cell see the same current. And finally, the can last one we discussed is this one putting in relation the battery, the VMS, with the other element of the vehicle, the VMU or VCU, as you call to call the charger, the DCC converter, the inverter, and so on. Okay, so this is I feel due time to shut me up. So that's all. I leave you back the floor to the other colleagues, and I will be very happy to answer to your question at the end of this session. Thank you for the patience and the attention. Thank you so much, uh, Vittoria, for your presentation. Uh, uh, let's I. 
let me i would like to invite dr jose uh, bienvendo biona from the techno uh, he's the technology advisor from toyo motors uh, the philippines hi um good afternoon to uh, to, uh, to to some of you good evening to some of you and also uh, good morning i guess maybe to 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 some of you um I am trying to figure out right now how do I present my screen. So do, do I just click show? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, I send, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are you seeing my screen now? Mm, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. So. The present. Oh, yeah. Yeah, good morning, good evening, and good afternoon to uh, to everyone, wherever you may be. So this evening I'll be uh, so it's evening here in Manila. So I'll I'll use good I'll use evening. So this evening I'll be uh, discussing uh, about um, our experience in the selection of the batteries for the EQA that we're developing under the Solutions Plus project, and we'll be uh, providing initially an overview of the particular project that we're working on and what were our key considerations. And then what was the battery sizing methodology that we uh, we adopted? Then at some point we have to decide whether we go for fast charging or slow charging. Then do we need a cooling system or not? What type of cooling system? And then, uh, yeah, definitely it's what smart features will be needed. And then some key points. <clears throat> yeah, to start my presentation, let me uh, play this uh, this video. So I'm having problems with my screen for a while. Yeah, so we have it here at the end of this video, a picture of the eco that we're developing. So it's going to be integrated into a smart system. In parallel to the EQUAD, we're also developing a flexible electric fan. So the, the vehicle weight for the EQUAD, we're looking at around 250 kilograms. That's the target weight. And then passenger um, capacity would be around five. But uh, if there's only, uh, if there's if there's going to use for, for cargo, then uh, we're looking at uh, 300 uh, kilograms of a uh, cargo weight, cargo weight to 70. The real range that we're targeting is 60. Uh, kilometers why 60 kilometers we did interviews and then because the, the main target for this equals will be for the use of local government units so currently based on their operations the average uh, mileage that uh, their vehicles are are doing every day is around 60 kilometers and we're looking at an ambient temperature of around uh, 25 to 40 uh, degrees celsius and uh, we're looking at top speeds of around uh, of around uh, 40, 45 uh, kilometers per, per hour. So you see there the speed time traces that we've gathered. And uh, we're, looking, we're looking at crawling this out in, in three business models. Okay, one would be the direct vehicle sales. Second would be you buy the vehicle without the batteries and you lease the batteries. Third would be you, you lease the whole vehicles. And then fourth would be uh, you're not buying anything, but instead you're leasing the service. Yeah. Uh, why am I pointing out these things? Because all of this would have an effect in the and the features of the battery that we're that we're integrating to this uh to, to this vehicle yeah so how did we size our, our battery so that's the first consideration the battery sizing so 
yeah, we gathered speed time traces uh, in, in the area and on which this uh, this vehicle will be operating. And we loaded this in our in our model. And together with that, also we loaded the different input vehicle parameters. So these are the considerations uh, okay, that um, that we uh, that we covered in the selection and in the, in the sizing of our batteries. So the vehicle curb mass, passenger mass, average number of passengers. Then you've got also the carpool mass in there, the charge discharge efficiency. So now, of course, that will depend on the on the cells that you're using, mechanical efficiency. Now we did as we we also put in estimates on the road tire tire frictions, drag efficiency, because all these things affects the load, the load that that will be acting on your vehicle that would have to be overcome by your motor, and of course it's the power um, supplied to the motor would have to be uh, provided by the uh, by the battery. And then after that, we define some drive lane. Um, on, on the model that we're using allows us to define or test out the key various drive drive lane configurations. So that includes the motor power and then also the rated speed, rated speeds of the of the motor that uh, we would want to test if it's is possible to use that for the given application and also the overall gear ratio. And then uh, from there, it now generates it now generates the uh, the size of the battery that we're going to use. Now, uh, maybe to provide a um, a better view on how it works, uh, I'm sharing now in here a, a a shot of the of the Excel sheet that we're doing. So this is a fairly simple uh, simple model. So you load in here the the speed time traces. So it computes for the load acting on the on the vehicle. You can also plug in here the uh, correct the efficiency characteristics of your of your motor because uh, yeah that affects also the consumption of the vehicle. And you can play around with uh, with the rated power that you're gonna use, and then on on you see in here some graph, so it tells you what's going to be the the speed power distribution as the vehicle runs through the the, the speed time trace that you've plugged in, and also um, it allows you to see um, how's your operating points vis-a-vis -vis the port RPM curve. Are you still within that within the range of the of the or within the capacity of the motor or or not. So you can try things out. You can vary, let's say we can put this to, we can set three kilo, kilowatts in here. And that's the effect. So a certain, some percentage of uh, some points in the operations of the vehicle will not be able to provide, provide the rated power. But, but nevertheless, we know that uh, the peak power would be, the peak torques would be a, a little bit higher than the, than the rated, than the rated torque. So yeah. Um, and then once once you change that, that also also affects your efficiency because the the way this model works, the efficiency here is uh, is prorated. The efficiency of the motor is prorated with the okay, with the with the R, with the with the um, normalized value with the RPM or rated RPM, the rated and the and the rated power. So so uh, so once you change the rated power, that also affects the efficiency of your of your motor. The same also if you change the overall gear ratio. Okay, that affects the operating points and therefore also affects the uh, the um, efficiency of of the uh, of the vehicle. So okay, this tool allows you to simulate things. And what are the key key, uh, key considerations here? So there are two key considerations. <clears throat> Number one is um, okay, the battery should be able to provide the uh, the discharge rate needed. So okay, this model also determines what's the peak power discharge that is needed from the battery and the uh, try to determine the motor size, the the, the battery size to, to provide that. So it's based on the battery power density. Also, um, it computes also for the power required because this model estimates now the uh, energy economy of the vehicle. So it allows you now to size the the, the battery based on the on based on the required range. So in this case, if you're going to size it based on the discharge rate, it's got to be 3.72 kilowatt hour. But based on uh, the battery uh, size, about based on the range, it's got to be five, five kilowatt hour. So we, we of course, we take you now the bigger value, and uh, this provides you now the specifications of your, of your, um, of your battery, okay, to provide you this, uh, this, this, this mile age. Yeah. So if you you change your target mile age, it change also the size of your, <coughs> of your battery. So in this case, we see already even at sixty, it's the range that dictates the size of the the size of the battery. So after getting the, um, the after determining the, the size of the battery using this, uh, using this model, 
uh, we, we we now have to decide are we going for fast charging or are we going for a uh, slow charging batteries we actually considered three key battery options a lithium phosphate uh, iron phosphate uh, lithium polymer titan uh, titanate um, oxide and the and the pure lto um chemistry and you see the upfront cost okay and then the range of, as much as possible we want to limit the cost around the cost of the of the cheapest so, so around this lfp so that's why even though we're adopting lpt or lto in case we adopt them um we have to reduce the battery capacity so that is still within that uh, cost range and of course in that case that reduces now your your range your, your distance your your uh, mile age okay but nevertheless since it allows you to to charge faster then that should be fine in the case of LPTO and the and LTO so but at the, <coughs> at the end of the day we decided to adopt LF, LFP is number one uh, yeah it, it anyway there's still the, the the available um space for for the battery uh in, in the vehicle is able to to accommodate the a, a bigger battery pack of the of the LFP and then also um I don't know how do I go back to that to my presentation. Okay, there. Yeah, so yeah, there's also enough space and then small daily uh, range requirements. So a, a slow charging battery should do. And then uh, cheaper upfront costs and no need for charging in between runs. Okay, but the, the next question now is uh, in case you're not adopt, in, in case um, you intend to adopt, um, you, you want to, the next question maybe is, so when do you adopt now fast charging batteries? Okay, number one, um, high daily mileage. Okay, we're in, um, it will require you to increase the size of the LFP and you don't have enough space for that. So yeah. You don't have uh, enough space, then you, you may go for be smaller batteries, but do, but uh, do fast charging. Uh, there are also cases where you have to do continuous operations. So uh, and then since you're gonna fit the a big battery size there, then there's no there's no there's no um, way really for you to go to go fast charging. And uh, of course, one one option is to is if you do battery swapping. But if you're operating in a wide wide area and you don't have the required uh, swapping, swapping that battery swapping network to to provide you the the service. Then, yeah. So then that's when you go for fast charging. <clears throat> In our case, uh, our guide is as much as possible. If it, if the slow charging can do it, okay, we go for it because it's cheaper. But if not, then okay, then there's no way but to go for, but to go for the fast charging battery. So yeah. So these were the key considerations that we look at, and uh, it, it led us to to finally decide to go for a lithium phosphate battery, a slow charging battery. So this this charges around 0.33 C uh, for, for rated charging uh, rates, and the for peak is around 1 C. <coughs> the LPTU is around 4 C, and the LTU is around 10 C. <clears throat> now we have to decide what, bat what what type of cooling, or do we actually adopt a cooling system for, for the third battery? So we did some drive cycle-based um, thermal simulation of the batteries. And the first thing to question, why, why don't we go for a force or natural convection, the pure pure air cooling? And then uh, we also evaluated the possibility of doing integrated cooling system. It's integrated the sense that the cooling paint is within the battery pack in itself. And then, um, okay, lastly, uh, we also look at uh, why don't we do a uh, an external cooling system wherein uh, you have the battery packs, you can remove the battery packs <clears throat> without really uh, removing the re removing the battery the, the 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 cooling plate. So we we actually made different decisions be, uh, on on the vehicles for the equad. Okay, we decided that okay, we can do force and natural cooling based on based on the simulations. Uh, but for the flexible electric van, um, we definitely need to have some uh, some uh, liquid cooling in there. And uh, since we're not really using top rated batteries, then uh, we decided that uh, we, it needs to be flexible. The setup needs to be flexible enough where we can remove the batteries, do some repairs uh, from, from time to time. So 
yeah, integrating the cooling system in the battery in the battery it's back in itself would be very uh, would be very tricky in that case. So we decided to go for external cooling. <clears throat> so for the EQUAD, there's no cooling based on the simulations. It should be able to handle things. And for for uh, for the uh, for the flab, okay, we need external external liquid uh, cooling. <clears throat> now um, I, I discussed a, a little bit about the business model earlier. Does that affect now what smart features your battery system needs to have? So in our case, we decided that uh, for us to be able to provide this to adopt this model, we need to be able to locate our, our batteries. Uh, we need to be able to track the real-time state of charge, cell level condition monitoring, so that we can see whether we have to replace certain cells or do some repairs before the problem uh, um, worsens. Um, we're also, we, we have also integrated the charging encryption wherein uh, they cannot, the, the, the user could not char charge the, the, the vehicles um, using uh, unauthorized uh, chargers. Um, remote management capabilities, so if if you're doing let's say battery leasing and you're not paying then we can we can put off your your batteries remotely and then uh yeah theft could be a problem here in in in, in could be a problem in some areas so we have also integrated some uh, extra security physical security and remote intrusion detection uh features in in, in the batteries that in the battery packs that uh, we have uh, we have developed yeah so some some key points Electric vehicle battery selection needs to take account of the performance requirements, operational characteristics, business models, and economics. So, uh, so it's not only the range. There's a lot of uh, other things that needs to be uh, that needs to be considered. <clears throat> and battery sizing should satisfy both the peak discharge and the range requirements. So I, I've demonstrated that earlier. <coughs> battery sizing should take strong account of operational requirements and economics. So, so we did this when we look at uh, what type of battery are we adopting in there. And cooling uh, system should account for the drive cycle. Yeah, so we did our our our, our thermal simulations using the actual drive cycle cycles that we gathered, so that we're able to see how the how the thermal uh, um, conditions of the battery changes uh, as the vehicle is driven, climate conditions, and the, some practicality. So that's why it led us to like, for example, adopt an external uh, cooling system in the case of in the case of uh, in the case of uh, our, our flexible electric uh, electric uh, vans, and lastly, battery module smart features depends no normally depends on the business model. Um, our guide is to make it as simple as possible, but if a certain smart feature is needed, key as 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 required by the business model, then we we integrate uh, we integrate them into the system. So yeah, so uh, that would be all for my talk. So uh, thank you very much, and we'll be glad to answer questions later. Thank you so much, uh, Jose, for your uh, presentation. Uh, I would also uh, emphasize that if you have any question, you can already put the question in the questions box and also refer it to the speaker. And later on during our Q&A session, we can review uh, your questions. Um, and now I, I would like to ask uh, Juan Caricori to uh, give the presentation. He's the researcher at Faculty of Engineering UDELAR from uh, Uruguay. Okay, thank you, Rehan. Um, now I will share my my screen. Let me know, please, if the, you can see my my presentation in full, full screen mode. Okay, okay, I, I guess it, it's okay. Um, first, well, I would like to. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I would like to, to present the, the frame, framework of this project. This is a, a research project conducted in the Faculty of Engineering of the 
University of the Republic. Uh, this is the, the public university here in Uruguay. Uh, well, this this project uh, counts with the support of the National Agency for Research and Innovation. It is AMII, and the participation of the Uruguayan SME uh, Green Star Electric Vehicles. Uh, well, the, the motivation of this project is uh, given the the electric vehicles uh, rise in, in in the coming year. Years, it's it's needed to to, to find a second uh, life for electric vehicle battery, in order to reduce their uh, environmental impact and add value to to such let's say uh, waste. Um, then we will see that uh, actually it's not a waste. Um, well, the objectives uh, are first uh, to develop a test method to identify uh, reusable cells of a battery pack, to study the feasibility of electric vehicle batteries reuse and second life, and to build a second life battery pack, SLBP, from used electric vehicle cells. Uh, the original battery pack, uh, well, it uh, comes from a kind of light electric vehicle. Uh, the technology of this battery pack is lithium iron phosphate, LFP. Uh, the original number of cells uh, was 24, 50 ampere hours, the capacity, uh, the nominal voltage, 3.2 volts. The manufacturer, uh, it's similar to HHE from China. The battery pack uh, was uh, delivered uh, without metal casing. There you can you can see the the, the battery pack uh, donated to to the faculty of engineering. Uh, it was also delivered without BMS. Uh, the original interconnection among uh, cells uh, is was welded. And the discard reason was, uh, 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 let's say, a damage uh, due to the over voltage during uh, a charging process. And the laboratory equipment uh, at the Faculty of Engineering is first uh, this equipment. It's a battery cycler. Uh, the brand and model is Cro Chroma uh, from the US. Uh, and the main uh, fact function I would say, I would say is uh, it's a programmable. You can program a waveform uh, battery charge and discharge uh, cure um, in order to make several tests. For example, WLTP driving cycle uh, discharge cure. For example, the the other. Um, important, let's say, equipment is uh, an explosion-proof chamber. Uh, the brand and model is uh, DXICO from China. The capacity is one cubic, cubic meter, and the maximum battery size in, is nine kilowatt hour. So you, you have to put there the, the device un, under test, the, I mean the battery pack, to, to be tested. Well, the test performed uh, on each cell uh, were based in the standard IEC C62660. Uh, uh, this standard is secondary lithium ion cells for pro propulsion of electric road vehicles, the part one, and also the USABC electric vehicle battery test manual. Uh, the first uh, test uh, was the static capacity test, which ob objective is to measure the, the cell capacity in amper, in amper hours under a constant current discharge. Uh, the procedure you, you can you can you can see uh, there first uh, you have to charge the cell according to the manufacturer information, uh, profile constant current constant uh, voltage. Then you have to discharge the cell at three by three direct current up to the cutoff voltage. And 
finally, you have to calculate the capacity according to the previously mentioned standard. And um, well, there you can see, for example, in the in the graph, uh, a good cell, let's say, um, and and a damaged cell. Uh, clearly, the 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 blue one is uh, have. Can, can deliver uh, an amount, a uh, higher amount of uh, um, capacity than the red one. In 19 of the total cells uh, approved with the test, deliver more than 95% of their uh, nominal capacity. The second power test uh, was based on the HPC uh, hybrid pools power characterization and peak power test from the USADC uh, handbook. Uh, the objective of this second test uh, is to determine the discharge power and regeneration characteristics of the cells through a hybrid uh, profile containing charge pools and discharge uh, pools. Uh, there you, you can see this, uh, this test. First, you have to discharge uh, the, the cell uh, at 2C during 10 seconds. Then you have, you have um, a rest time during one minute. Uh, it was uh, performed uh, to our possibility. Originally, uh, in the HPPC, it is one hour. Um, uh, finally, the regeneration pools at a uh, one point C, uh, C rate uh, during 10 seconds. Um, the power test, uh, well, the procedure is uh, you have to fully charge the cell according to the manufacturer information. Keep the cell in open circuit for 30 minutes. Run the power test mentioned before. Uh, discharging uh, the 10% of the cell capacity at C uh, by 3 DCC rate. Uh, repeat these steps, the number two and three, nine times until at least 90% of the nominal capacity have been discharged. And final, finalized uh, the test by discharging the cell to its cutoff uh, voltage at C by 3, this C, uh, it is direct current um, C rate. And well, uh, there uh, we, we got uh, the cell selection. Uh, 16 cells were, were uh, approved this test and were uh, selected. So we this uh, 16 cells, we uh, built the battery pack. Uh, the battery pack uh, voltage has uh, to be 48 uh, volts compatible with Valeo powertrain and Green Star vehicle. Due to the serious uh, connection, the battery pack capacity is, uh, the nominal is uh, 50 uh, ampere hours which means uh, 2.4 kilowatt hour uh, capacity in, in, in terms of energy. The cell connection, it was implemented as screw connection at, uh, and there you can see the, the, the screw. And we made a container cabinet, a metal cabinet was uh, designed and manufactured in order to provide mechanical protection uh, to, to the battery pack. Um, where else? The, regarding the BMS, uh, there you can see a picture of the BMS and the uh, uh, Bluetooth uh, uh, screen, let's say. Um, the BMS requirements uh, comply with uh, UN Regulation 136 with protection against over uh, charge, uh, over discharge, short circuits, and over temperature. Uh, it has the ability, uh, ability to manage up to 24 uh, lithium iron phosphate uh, cells 
and the rate of current is uh, 150 amp amperes. Well, it has Bluetooth connection with a nav in English, which permits to configure uh, several parameters. And it has also active cell balancing. Um, the, regarding the, the, the test results, results to the battery pack, uh, from the battery pack, uh, regarding the static capacity test, uh, the battery pack delivered 48.8 uh, ampere hours in total. It is near to the nominal capacity. Uh, regarding the power test to the to the battery pack, um, the the built battery pack completed the power test without exceeding the volt uh, limits uh, of each cell, de delivering uh, in total 48.5 ampere hours. So there. Uh, you can see on the left hand the static capacity cell uh, test uh, of the battery pack, and on the right hand, hand you can see the the power test of the battery pack. Uh, well, there uh, on the right right hand you can see the the the, the battery pack. Uh, that we we have uh, made uh, and the, the main conclusions are first uh, 79 percent of the original cells are still able to storage uh, 95 percent of the original capacity and 16 cells were used for the second life battery pack manufacturing uh, well uh, some difficulties are also when assembling the battery pack due to the screwed uh, cell terminals. It was not easy to, 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 to get to got, uh, um, well, a good solution for, for this. Uh, the state of charge operation range is between 10% and 100%. Uh, 16 of the 24 cells approved both tests, the power and capacity test. Uh, the battery pack uh, weight is 25 kilograms. The battery pack discharge peak current is up to 2C C rate and charge peak current is up to 1.5C uh, C rate uh, during 10 seconds. And the total uh, capacity is Mm, 48 ampere hours. Uh, finally, uh, the vehicle simulations. Well, um, like the like vehicle simulations were conducted, finding that uh, the battery pack would fit well to uh, WLTP class three driving cycles, strike uh, driving cycle. Um, Vehicle parameters corresponds uh, to the local design and manufacturer, like electric vehicle owned by the Uruguayan and uh, SME Green Star. This uh, here you, you can you can see the the vehicle uh, on the right uh, hand. Uh, the results shows uh, 40 kilo, kilo, kilometers range. Uh, there you can see the the current versus time uh, curve simulation. Uh, so uh, I, I would say that we, 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 we got a very good result. Um, finally, the next steps, uh, well, is coming the validation of the battery pack in the real vehicle, uh, the cost evaluation and economic viability and at the end, uh, at least, but um, well, this, the the cell recycling for the discarded uh, cells is ongoing at, at the university here in Uruguay. It is another project uh, that is is next. Uh, so this is all for from my side. So I will be able to 
uh, question or comments from the audience. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Juan, for your presentation. Well, um, let's uh, start the Q and uh, A sessions together. We uh, feel free to add your uh, question in the question section. Well, I have two questions at the moment. Uh, one question is how does the, um, yeah, let's start from the general one. I would like to ask another time whether you would share us your PowerPoint presentation, both those for yesterday and today ones. Actually, that's a question to the, all the speakers. If uh, it's possible to share your presentation in the, with the participant, uh, is that possible? Juan? Yes, of Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, sure, sure. And also, yeah. Okay, I think the best efficient uh, way uh, would be that uh, we collect all the presentation from these uh, training session and then at the end of the training we will share the presentation with all the presenters. I already uh, received the presentation from yesterday, so I will put all the presentation together and we will uh, send it to you. Uh, another question is uh, they didn't mention uh, to whom, but the question is, how does the calculation affect the picking of the correct battery, considering that the climate range varies constantly through a day? So feel free to answer this question because they didn't uh, mention the name of the speaker. I guess that's a question for... Can you can you repeat the, the question? Yes, sure. How does the calculation affect the peaking of the correct battery, considering that the climate range varies constantly through a day? I guess that's a question to uh, Jos. Are you still with us? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Ah. Uh yeah so so in 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 in, in our model um our, our fuel economy uh, our energy economy model actually is not able to consider the uh the climatic conditions okay but it's able but it's possible to to consider terrain conditions because you can plug in there also gradient profile of the uh of of, of, of the road you can also vary for example the uh the tire friction, the tire rolling friction, because it's possible that the vehicle runs right now on on a paved road. At some point, if we were running on an unpaved road, so yeah. So uh, these are parameters that you can actually set in there. Uh, but it's not, but it's uh, but right now it's unable to consider the uh, climatic conditions. Okay, although we consider climatic conditions when we simulated the uh, the battery heating, and that allows us to uh, to design the proper. Uh, Proper cooling, uh, proper cooling, uh, cooling system. Yeah, yeah. And then if it is also possible that uh, Thank you. you plug in a longer drive cycle, maybe throughout the day, and then because drive cycles could vary uh, significantly as well, so you can load longer drive cycles to to have a uh, more depend dependable uh, 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 value. Okay, thanks. I hope you I answered your question. Thank you. So I we don't have more questions. Feel free to ask your question. We still have some time left. We have a question that goes to Vittorio. I would like to ask if you can talk a little bit uh, on communication with, between BMS and VMU. Yes, uh, uh, as I try to explain in the slide, 
at least in the automotive business today, the communication is CAN based. CAN is a standardized protocol um, with a given speed, a given format, and so on. Uh, at the end, you connect all the devices of the propulsion system to this uh, data bus, the VMU is first, but also the charger, the um, BMS of the battery, so the BMS representing the working in the mode of the battery, the inverters, the DC-DC converter, all the components are in general connected to this data bus. There is a DBC file, it is a file in which are defined all the messages that the different devices have to exchange. For instance, as we said, the BMS will transfer back instantaneously to the VMU, which is the maximum power that the battery in that given time can accept or can give, braking, accelerating, charging, uh, the state of charge, the state of all the information. And this is used by the VMU, in the case of the battery, to define which request of performance and limitation apply. In general, uh, the system can be done largely simpler in a BV, because at the end, the actor uh, transferring the request of the driver to the wheels are just one, the battery, the motor, and the transmission. And due to that, a lot of the time, this unit is integrated physically, the VMU is integrated physically in the inverter of the motor, and the request of the, of the pedal of the driver are directly transferred in request of torque to the motor with the limitation of voltage coming from the battery. In case of hybridized architecture, when the actuator transferring the driver request to the wheel can be more than one, for instance, an engine and in parallel electric motor, there is in general a so-called hybrid control unit whose aim is to split the request among the different elements, the motor and the engine, for instance, keeping into account the limitation of the battery. If the system operates properly, you can guarantee to the end user in general and the plenty for the typology of electrification the performance requested in the best way with the highest efficiency, so the lowest consumption, and limiting the difference between the request and the actuation. This difference can take place if, for instance, you are asking to the, to the motor a power that the battery in that given time cannot forward, but the logic is instead to switch off the battery and open the circuit, try to give the maximum in a continuous way in order to transfer to the driver the feeling or that can have in a traditional car where at the end there is no physical link between the accelerating pedal and the torque. There is simply the feeling that if you press more, you want more torque. If you press less, you want less torque. Thank you for your answer. Well, I have a question regarding um, the privacy issue related to BMS. Is there any privacy issue regarding the user who is using that battery or it's really disconnected from the, uh, the user? With user, what do you mean? I mean, that if you are using a private car and you have the yeah. BMS, system inside the battery is that mm -hmm. also influence your privacy is really disconnected from your personal uh, thing yeah let me say at least in Europe it has to in the sense that there is the GDPR regulation that is very strict and very severe and that is a, a mm -hmm. not negligible issue because at least in the wide diffusion of electric vehicle scenario a lot of techniques uh, trying to optimize the behavior of the battery and the system uh, trust uh, on the idea to transfer the vehicle data to an external cloud, use the external cloud to make uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning deep calculation, and transferring back uh, the correct usage information to the vehicle. Uh, this massive transfer of data, in principle, can or has to avoid to 
uh, influence uh, GDPR issues, so the privacy of the driver and so on. So the anonymization of the data is a very complex discussion point, uh, but undoubtedly has to be taken into account, at least in Europe, as a priority, because no private uh, information of the user has to be used for this purpose. Thank you. Uh, another question. Uh, Juan, can you please answer this? Uh, they're asking about, can you explain further on the HPPC test? How different are the results compared to continuous charge discharge? Yeah. Yeah, basically the, the HPPC is um, a power test. I mean, um, the conditions uh, for each cell are several than, than the continuous uh, test. Uh, so in, in, in this way, you, you can stress the, the behavior of, of each cell and well uh you 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 can conclude if if each else e cell able to uh to manage and support uh to resist i mean um several conditions in in terms of uh high uh, current high uh, c rate uh not only uh, charging uh, current, but also a uh, dis dis discharge current. So more or less, the, the difference is uh, is the stress that the cell uh, uh, is able to resist uh, during the HPPC. Uh, several conditions are imposed to to each cell. This is the concept, basically. Um, during the uh, standard charging and discharge, uh, charging and discharging uh, test, uh, the conditions are not several. So more or less, this is the 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 difference between them. Thank you. So, yeah, we don't have any more questions. In the meantime, may I have a question for one? <laughs> sure. The question is, uh, uh, according to the knowledge of battery you are using in the pack you re re rebuilt up, in the highest voltage condition, which is the maximum voltage of the pack you built up with 16 cells? Uh, you mean the, the maximum voltage that the laboratory, laboratory can... No, 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 the one you have on the pack with, with 16 oh. cells when they are fully charged and then you want to put the highest power inside for it. Yeah, yeah. Basically, um, it it was based in the manufacturer information, right? Uh, so um, the cells are uh, lithium iron phosphate, this mm -hmm. is, which means that the nominal voltage is 3.2 uh, volts, and mm -hmm. the maximum uh, voltage for for each cell is 3 uh, six, uh, 65 volts. So this is the the end of of. So of you are some way something under sixty as a pack level. Yeah. I imagine. Let me do a yeah. quick calculation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sixty-five by sixteen, fifty-eight point four. Okay, and that fits uh, the maximum voltage of the value inverter, correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, we we. We had to to analyze all the all the cells, the mm -hmm. 16 cells, because the the end of voltage is not the same for for mm -hmm. all, all the cells. So you you have to choose uh, the the minimum of the of the total 
mm-hmm. order to 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 not not exceed exceed uh, such uh, such voltage uh, during the charging of the battery pack. Uh, so uh, with such with such this voltage of the of of the limit limitation mm-hmm. cell. Uh, we define the the end of charge voltage of the battery pack, right? Yeah, but if, if I'm right. You have also implemented a, a balancing system, or not? Yeah, active balancing. Yeah. Active. So you, in some way, you can I, I imagine avoid current flowing in the cell that reach the maximum voltages first and continue the charging of the other. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Uh, yeah. We we had uh, some difficulties uh, regarding the active balancing uh, uh, feature of the BMS mm-hmm. because it it it, uh, it doesn't work really well uh, or mm-hmm. at least is the so so uh, slow the 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 balancing of 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 the battery pack so. Uh, it will, uh, at the end, we uh, define it that uh, the active balancing feature of the BMS um, was not uh, a, a, a good characteristic of mm-hmm. such BMS. Uh, so uh, it, it's a critical point, I, I would say, uh, the such feature, the, the, the active balancing uh, characteristic of the BMS, you have to choose a good BMS uh, which uh, can manage. Uh, yeah, but today, at least in the product we have on the market, uh, it's common to use passive solution. So small uh-huh. resistances that bypass the charged cell is less efficient, obviously, because you lose some energy, but yeah. it's uh, more stable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Our experience is, is the same. Uh, because the the the, the active uh, balancing uh, doesn't work uh, really yeah. really well. Yeah, we had the same experience in the past. <laughs> ah, great, excellent, good to know, good to know. But I understand also that at university level, it's important to let me say challenge with the problems and find the new solution, and because that's what we expect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> we are learning a lot during yeah. the process. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. No, you're welcome. Thank you. I have another question for Dr. Jose. Uh, They would like to ask if there is any kind of warning they give the battery user before disconnecting it remotely. Yes, uh, there's a warning. Uh, So the the lesser or the, the less he will be is receiving um, uh, notice that uh, he has uh, he has unpaid use, and then he will be advised that uh, okay, the uh, the service should be cut at a certain date. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, if I guess that there is no more question, then. Uh... I think we can close the session here. Thank you so much for everyone to join the session. Uh, We will continue with the training session tomorrow with more interactive way. And thank you again uh, to all the speakers. Uh, It was really fruitful, well, at least for myself. And uh, yeah, I wish you a very nice evening, day, very, very warm. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you a lot. And anyway, for any question, doubts, uh, you have the mail address, uh, you will have the presentation. So please ask and contact us if needed. Yeah. Well, I have one more question. <laughs> Can anyone explain to me how charging voltage is determined with respect to pack and nominal voltage? I think that's the last question. Can you repeat the question? Because I missed one part in the middle. 
can anyone explain to me how mm -hmm. charging voltage is determined with okay. respect to pack nominal voltage? Yeah, uh, in general, in uh, the charging of the battery, there are strict relation between the voltage at which to stop the constant current phase and pass to the constant voltage uh, related to the temperature. So it's easy if the pack is small and the pack is well, let me say, homogeneous in terms of temperature to use a value that is the average of the value you find in the different cell to fix this condition, this threshold. Clearly, the bigger is the pack, the more different are the position of the sub-pack inside the car and or in the bus. And the more different are the temperature, the more critical become the game. And at this point, in general, is selected the most conservative condition that allow not to damage the battery, but does not help to maximize the charge. So in general, the single measures, by the example done by one before, are used as limitation. If you have to avoid to overcome a certain voltage value because it's dangerous for the thermal run rate of the battery, the, the cell with the highest temperature is the driver to define the voltage that is applied multiplied by the number of setting series for the pack as a whole. But it means also that to maximize the effectiveness, you need to keep the battery cell at the same temperature as much as possible. Yeah, another limitation uh, uh, would be linked to the type of cell. I mean, uh, in the case of lithium iron phosphate, uh, the end of charge uh, voltage is uh, more or less 3.6 per cell, but uh, different chemistries uh, uh, have different end of, of voltage uh, uh, limits. So the battery pack uh, and voltage uh, during the charging process uh, could could be related with the chemistry of the of the battery cells, I, I, I would say. Yeah, and doubtfully. For instance, if you have the lithium iron phosphate, as I said before, by one you reach 3.665, and nickel cobalt manganese lithium ion solution for two, um, titanate cell 2.8. So, also among the so called lithium cells that are intended as the same cell, there are large differences depending how the lithium cell is realized. And obviously, the charger has to take care of the proper chemistry of the pack is controlling. Okay, thank you so much again. And I think, yeah, that was the last question. I don't see any other question. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thanks again. Okay. <laughs> see you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.